Monte Carlo Analysis. The Monte Carlo Analysis simulation allows the behavior of a simulation to be seen when the device tolerances are varied. This can include resistor, capacitor, transistor, and even DC source variations. We're going to begin by opening up the um, design files, and these, of course, are located on the eLearn site under starting designfiles.zip. We're going to decompress those, open up Project Monte Carlo Project PCB, and then within the Projects panel, open up the schematic. So we have a very simple sinusoidal source going to an RC network with an R load. So to begin, we're going to go into V1 and modify the model. So we'll click on the Edit button at the, the bottom of the screen. Go to the Parameters tab. We're going to change the DC magnitude to 10 volts, the AC magnitude to 10 volts, the uh, amplitude to 10 volts, as well as the offset. Click OK to dismiss those dialogs. Toolbar for simulation. I'm going to select the Monte Carlo analysis, so enable that option. And within that window, you'll see here that there is um, some uh, overall simulation parameters. C, that should be set to minus one. Distribution uniform, and the number of runs, we'll keep it five. That's the number of curves that will be generated. Down below here is the tolerance ranges for the various elements of the design. We're going to right now turn everything to zero except for the DC sources. We're going to enable the operating point analysis. And under general setup, we're going to enable just the VIN as the active signal. And disable transient analysis. Now run the simulation. And what we see here is for the operating point, uh, VIN of 10 volts, um, but then we also have the Monte Carlo variations with the 10% change on the DC source. Uh, so underbar M1 is the first Monte Carlo run, M2 the second one, etc. To see the varied values in the Monte Carlo simulation, we can open up the SWD file located under Generated Text Documents Monte Carlo SWD. So we see here the um, R1 and C1 have a deviation of zero. V1, though, has a deviation of 10%. And then the actual value used is 9.76, in this case, for M1. Now we're going to go back to the analysis setup, and we're going to disable the operating point and go look at the AC small signal from 1 hertz up to 2 kilohertz. Sweep and decade. Under Monte Carlo analysis, we'll now modify the ver tolerance variations for R and C to be 10%. And then under general setup, we're going to have the only active signal is V out. And now we're going to run the simulation. Now, what we see here on the top is the V out signal with um, no Monte Carlo analysis. That's just the default as we would normally see. Down below here though is the Monte Carlo. You can tell at a glance because of the multiple curves, uh, M1, um, M2, 3, 4, and 5. Down below here is the variations we see by changing the RNC values. What changes? Well again, under the projects panel, under generated text documents, we can open up the SWD file and it will show us precisely the values of R1, C1, and V1 as we go through the process. Now we'll notice here that the uh, minus 3 dB point is somewhere around here, 100 hertz. So if we wanted to zoom in and um, get a more, uh, more accurate simulation in that range, we can go back to the V1 source edit the model, and then change the parameter for frequency to be 100 hertz. And now we'll disable the AC small signal analysis and look at the transient response. Make sure you have used transient defaults, that the default cycles displays is 5, and the cycles and defined points per cycle is 50. And then run the simulation. And now we see here uh, a V out 
without the, uh, the, ver the tolerance variations, and then below we see it with the variations, again, with the five curves because of the five runs we requested. If we zoom in on a particular portion of the curve, we can better look at uh, the variation uh, for our design. Going back to the Monte Carlo analysis uh, options and distribution that uh, we had set to uniform, we can try Gaussian, for example. So this is a little bit different. Uh, it uses a plus or minus three sigma value based on the, on the Gaussian curve, rather than uniform distribution, which is the case for the uniform drop-down selection. Worst case, which is another option you can choose, will randomly set the tolerance at maximum uh, plus or minus uh, for each component. Going back to our setup, under Monte Carlo analysis, and we'll return this back to uniform, uh, in addition to having general tolerance numbers, we can actually have specific tolerances as well. We click on the one defined and then we'll see the three dots. We can choose a specific uh, designator, for example, C1, and choose a tolerance uh, for it, for example, 2%. Tracking number needs to be set to one. You can also set a lot tolerance. We won't do this now, but uh, you can handle components created from the same silicon batch, for example. You give them the same lot tracking number. The lot tolerance specifies the variation these values can be apart from each other, but the device tolerance will still apply to the value as before. Now we're going to change the number of runs to something like 200 to really see a nice um, thick distribution. Click OK, and then we're going to run our simulation. And now we have the simulation complete. And if we were to zoom in, we can see the variation for all of the curves generated. So you can get a really good idea on um, the entire effect coming from varying various parameters of the passive components, as well as uh, any active ones, and even the voltage sources. You might be wondering how the Monte Carlo tolerances get set since no modifications were required to any of the components. Special control syntax is specified in the generated netlist that instructs the simulator to apply the tolerances. This allows the flexibility of setting these directly in the netlist and running the netlist file.